Hi everybody, this is the Whisper Corner. I bought this book a few months ago now. It's a book of older maps. And I never got round to following it. So, now that I'm back recording again, I thought I would just have a look through the book, the little logo on the front cover here is of a ship in strong seas, or a ship being attacked by a snake, one of the two. You know, who knows? I need to be very careful opening this because the last time I opened the book the camera went flying. I'm very happy to report that this book that cost me five pounds the person who bought it. Can you see it? There it is paid 55p, so he made a good profit anyway. So this book contains antique maps of Europe, the Americas, West Indies, Australasia, Africa and the Orient. is the Atlantic Ocean. We have United States, South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, New England, New Brunswick. Camera a wee bit here. Okay, this is not quite getting it off. There we go. So, let's say Annapolis, Pennsylvania, and just as a whole, we have North America. So This book is from 1972, so I'm just going to read a bit from the start of the book here before looking at the maps. By definition, a map is a graphic statement of direction and contour. It endeavours to represent three-dimensional surfaces on two-dimensional paper in such a way that a real appreciation of the terrain is conveyed to the reader of the map. Most cartographers have provided incredibly accurate maps of the world, moon and other celestial bodies, but to do this they all used advanced scientific techniques including aerial surveys. The early map makers, although endeavouring to make their work as accurate as possible, were limited to crude and inadequate equipment. During the 15th century, when the earliest maps were produced, there was little background knowledge or reference sources available to the cartographer. In fact, during this period it was not possible to establish longitude with any real accuracy, 
neither was there an established unit of measurement. In England, the mile of 1,760 yards became statutory for London and Westminster in 1593, and with the expansion of the postal services in the 17th century, it became the accepted unit for the post mile throughout the kingdom. During 1824, the statutory mile was finally established by the Act for the Uniformity of Measures. 15th century cartographers did not avail themselves of all the then known printing techniques, some of which involved the refinement of tonal graduations, but confined themselves to relief and intaglio blocks. Lithography made its debut during the 19th century, and whilst a number of collectors will consider this period too late for serious study, many interesting and attractive maps made their appearance. So, just on this opposite page here. We have the map of Anglia Regnum. Gotta get that shine away. There we go. Um, a beautiful antique coloured map of England and Wales by John Johnson, embellished with the royal coat of arms, ships and a decorative cartouche. The size of the original was 15 and 1 8 inch by 19 and a half inches, and it was published in Amsterdam in 1650. There we have the coasts of Ireland. The Isle of Man, looking a lot bigger than I think it is. So that's a pretty, you would have to say, a pretty accurate representation of England and Wales. And that was from 300, uh, more or less 370 years ago. This is a map. DNI Regnum, an antique map by Matthias Sitter of the Kingdom of Denmark and the Duchies of Schleswig and Holstein, published in 1730. So here you have Denmark. Just make it the rivers, little small marks for trees. The writing on it's very small, and in Latin, so unless you speak Latin, and then if you come over here. We have a map of North America. Let's zoom in a wee bit on this one since it's quite a small map. North America. This map by A. Finley gives prominence to natural features, lakes, rivers, headlands, etc. It's from the Dictionary, published by Thomas Kelly for Berkeley's Dictionary of the United States, 
1840. Here you have the Andes, not the Andes, sorry, the Rockies, separating plains from the west coast. Here, Greenland. North America. So this next section, we're coming on to the map makers. Sebastian Munster, 1489-1552, born in Hessen in 1489 and educated in both Tübingen and Heidelberg. Sebastian Munster's earliest maps produced from the woodcuts dated from about 1530. He produced both large and small maps, including continental maps of Africa, the Americas and world maps. In 1528, Munster requested German geographers to survey their own provinces and to forward the results of their work to him. Of those received, many were printed, together with acknowledgments in his Cosmographia, published initially in Basel in 1550. In all, there were some 30 editions terminating in 1628. Then we have Jared Mercator, he might have heard of, of the Mercator projection map of the world. Born 1512, died 1594. Born in Ribblewand near Antwerp in 1512, Jared Mercator was not only a, a cartographer of outstanding ability, he was also a skilled engraver. Until 1552, Mercator was a maker of mathematical and astronomical instruments. It was during this period of his career that he produced a number of splendid globes. His first map, engraved on a copper plate, was published in 1537. Nearly all his maps were original productions, being both drawn and engraved by him. Mercator produced an atlas issued in three parts, which was published between the years 1585 and 1595. He also produced maps of single countries and groups of countries. After Mercator's death, his sons and grandsons continued to issue his maps, supplemented with works of their own until 1606, when the plates were acquired by Jodogus Hondius, who continued to issue maps from them. Then we have Abraham Ortelius, Ortelius born in Antwerp in 1527, died in 1598. John Norden, born in England, 1548, died in 1626. John Speed, born in England, 1552, died in 1629. Christopher Saxton. Born in 1542, died in 1606. These are all just the cartographers whose maps appear in this book. Peter van den Keer, Wilhelm Jans Blau, Nikolai Fisher, John Jansen, William Kipp. Nicholas Sonson and a 
a lot more. So these two small maps at the top here, we have Western Hemisphere or New World and the Eastern Hemisphere or Old World. The size of the original was 8 by 16 inches. It was published in 1807. Western Hemisphere, a map with highly decorative borders of Indians, animals, and wheels. There must be a wheel down there. So this map is from 1850. Quite a large gulf there in between. California, in Southern California, or Mexico, whatever you know. So we have the North Atlantic Ocean, the South Atlantic Ocean, the North Pacific Ocean, the South Pacific, the Antarctic, and just the very bottom there we have the North, sorry, the South Pole. That's from 1850. And then on this side we have the Northern Hemisphere projected on the plane of the horizon by Buchanan, 1816. We have the sheer size of Africa. In fact, see this is 1816, don't know if you can tell here, but this region here is called Unknown. So we have South America. North America, the North Pole. The Ural Mountains separating Eastern or Asian Russia from Western Russia. This is a rather fancy looking map. A miniature map of the world, only three and a quarter inches in diameter. This map is extremely rare and only two copies are known to exist. One is owned by S. Eisler of Am Amerson, Buckinghamshire, 
and the other copy is in the possession of the British Museum. It was engraved by W. Kipp in 1602, and most of the inscriptions are in Latin, except the name Jehovah, which is in Hebrew. Inscribed in the bottom of the map are the words Terra Australis Incognita, meaning the unknown land of the south. The first verse of Psalm 24, quoted in Latin, exclaims, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. It is interesting to note the hand of God, the forearm encircled by a collar of cool cloud appearing out of a blazing sun, just there at the top holding a cord attached to the roof of the world, and as it were, pulling the world into the shape of a spheroid to fit into the upper ring, outer ring. So, down at the bottom there we have it. Terra Australis Incognita. So that's the Antarctic. Here in Africa, oh, rather wonky looking South America. So then let's have a look at this one. This map is a star chart. Let's see if we can do something about this light. A star chart for the Northern Hemisphere by J.B. Homan, including a portion of the ecliptic black and white line with a rounded from right to left the zodiacal constellations, Pisces. It'd be handy if I knew which one was Pisces. Aries is a ram. I don't see a ram. Let's see, if they're, in, if, they're in, if they're in order, Taurus is a bull. Isn't it? That's a bear. And that's a crab. I don't know my constellation animals because, you know, gobbledygook. Gemini, Cancer, Leo, and Virgo. Leo would be a lion. But I can't quite make out this map. of interest and has the list of them just here. So to say that's from sixteen seventy five. 
And here we have a map of Bohemia. Bohemia. This map by John Speed is decorated with views of Salsa, Kamathar, Praga, Palm, Shalani, Laon, the court of the emperor, and the figures of the king and queen and other lesser nationals, such as a merchant and a common man. The date is from 1626. Engraved in the cartouche is the original date of the plate. The lower cartouche scroll encompasses the names of Richard Chiswell and Thomas Bassett. Map sellers who acquired the plates at a later date, probably 1676. And again, at the bottom here, we have another map of. Denmark. This one from 1720. We have a map of the Abruzzi from 1648. Here we have a large map of the northern part of Russia in Europe. It shows the Barents Sea up here in the north and the White Sea. In the northwest corner is the Kola Peninsula. And then further south, the lakes of Ladruga and Onega. And then, then here we have a map of Picardia, which is where John Luke Picard came from, obviously. That's from 1734. sort of map. It's very three-dimensional. Part of Illyria. This antique colored map is of German origin and shows the area around Ragusa. The Italian name for Dubrovnik and the Bay of Kotor. The inset portrays the terrible destruction the top left corner there, the terrible destruction and burning of the city of Ragusa. Illyria was the name originally given to an ancient region on the north, sorry, on the east coast of the Adriatic. It became a Roman province from the 1st to the 5th century AD. It doesn't actually say when this map was made. And then the bottom here, Spira, now Spare in Germany, a map by Sebastian Munster, published in 1552. So here we have the Kingdom of Naples, decorated with an elaborate cartouche, was published in 1720. Denmark again, I think the publishers of this book, the big fans of Denmark. So here again we have a map of Denmark. And this, the top here, is a map of Utrecht in the Netherlands by Marketer from 
of Ireland or UK just so I can actually, you know, recognize places. Drawn ships are off the coast. It was published in 1690. Near the map of France from 1802. The map of France divided into 102 departments. The original size of the map was 21 inches by 21 inches. Here we have a map of Europe. Sort of annoying, it doesn't actually tell you in the description when it was from. A new plain and exact map of Europe by N. Fisher, English edition by J. Blue. The borders are decorated with the views of London, Prague, Rome, Antwerp. Amsterdam, Paris, Seville, Danzig, Stockholm and Hamburg and with figures of men and women representing various nations also heads of the kings of Spain, France, Sweden and Denmark It was published by Robert Walton A small map of the Outer Hebrides have been treated by a wash, but the beautiful cartouche has been left uncolored. There's a quite nice map here. Finister, an extremely decorative map of the French department inset panels providing statistics, curiosities, celebrities, commercial details, and a key to the symbols used. This is a one of a series of by V. Le Vosseur, published in Paris, 1845. Japan and Korea. 
Korea, spelled with a C, by J. Rapkin, with a view of Yero, which was Tokyo. A state barge, and a spin barge here, and a group of native Koreans. This is from 1850. Does anyone else see a dragon? Um, the Emperor of the Mughals. This map shows the empire extending over north and central India and much of Afghanistan. It is decorated with a small cartouche, ships and elephants. From 1660. So, this is a map of Asia, and it was known then, this is the West Ocean, the Chinian Ocean, the East Ocean, the Arabian and Indian Sea, very thin looking India, Malaysia. This map, a companion to Europe, a new plane, an exact map. The borders are decorated with views of Eden, Jerusalem, Goa, Macau, and with figures in native costumes. Also featured are the heads of the kings of Tartary, China, Ceylon, Persia, Turkey, and the Moluccas. Unfortunately, no date for the year. So there we have another map of Japan and Korea. With the Korean Sea. Of Ukraine. More maps of Japan and Korea. So we have Russia and the Ottoman Empire. New Zealand from 1850. Map drawn and engraved by J. Rapkin. And here we have a map of the Pacific Ocean. A chart, even. A chart of the Pacific Ocean. A chart surveying recent discoveries in the region. The original was 9 by 13 inches, published in 1825. So Terra Australis, and it says here, New Holland. So we have New Zealand, Pacific Ocean, the South Pacific Ocean, the North Pacific Ocean. We have the Sandwich Islands. There we have Borneo, the China Sea, Papua New Guinea. So I'm 
map of Polynesia and all the small islands from 1850. small maps of the different st areas of America. We have Mississippi Territory and then Carolina up here it's from 1696. New South Wales and Australia and then South Australia. A small map of the United States from eighteen twenty. more from 1820 and then we have a seafaring map chart of North Atlantic Ocean with tracks of the shipping to West Indies North America and so on and that's from 1815 so you can see the different routes from Britain to America, from Africa to Central America. So we had a map of Rhode Island and Connecticut. in North Carolina. A map of Kansas and Nebraska. Virginia and Maryland, Carolina, here we have the river Mississippi, the map shows the course of the river from the sea past New Orleans to Bayagulis, it was published for London Magazine 1760. It's getting kind of low. Here we have a map of South America from 1765. We have Amazonia, Terra Firma, Brazil, Patagonia, Chile, Quito. You see there for Mexico, it says Mexico or New Spain. I think I might just call it a day there. So the battery is starting to flash. But you get the idea. So this is Nubia and Abyssinia. This map by Ebon also features the kingdoms 
tributaries are too important upon them. An area that roughly covers the land between Egypt, the Blue Nile and the Red Sea, extending in the south to the modern borders of Kenya and Somalia and the Indian Ocean. smile on the left hand side. This map is called Invasions of England and Ireland. The invasions of England and Ireland with all their civil wars since the conquest. A very rare map by John Speed showing battles in progress on land and sea. Published in 1676. The English were doing a lot of fighting. A map of Bedfordshire. Bedfordshire. And then to the top here we have Somer Somerset. But as I say, I think I will call that a day. So there's the map on the back cover. You have the Black Sea, the Baltic, it's a nice kind of sound. You have the Mediterranean. It's a pity that it doesn't give any information about this final map or any sort of year. So, thanks for watching and cheerio bye.